So, so, so let, let, let me show you uh, when it comes to rich text editing, right? So what I'm using for my rich text editor is tip tap, right? The reason why I'm using tip tap is because uh, DraftJS, which used to be something that Facebook maintained, they deprecated it. Now they have lexical JS and I will never use anything other than react by Facebook in my life. Once I stop using React, it's, yeah. So they had this one, they deprecated it, they switched to this one. It's terrible. Tip tap whatsoever is a solid implementation on, uh, I can show you here. It was very painful. So tip tap, as you can see, is, is uh, an abstraction on top of the pros mirror. For those of you who don't know, pros mirror is a API built for building rich text editors in the browser. Why do you need an API for building rich text editor in the browser? You might ask, it's a logical question because building rich text editors is very hard. Why is it very hard? You might ask the follow-up question. Well, it's hard because you need to do a lot of JavaScript to achieve that. You need to uh, monitor where the cursor is in the editor. You need to implement leaves and nodes and blocks and stuff. If you don't know these concepts, Every rich text, rich text editor in the browser, no matter which one it is, or if you want to build your own, has a concept of anchors and focus and blocks and leaves and nodes. And these are basically things like this would be a, some sort of a leaf. This cursor position right now is set in state. Is my cursor at the start of the string or is my cursor at the end of the string? Is it here? Is something highlighted? Is, is there a block? Is the text indented? So there's a lot of complexity. That's why Prose Mirror as an API exists with a insanely huge, insanely huge API. As you can see here, there's a lot of stuff, right? There's a lot of stuff you can do. So you can do that, or you can use an abstraction such as TipTap. TipTap is this it's a company that raised money from Y Combinator. Uh, y Combinator, if you haven't heard, is the most popular incubator accelerator in the world. So these guys raised money. Uh, they raised a couple of million of dollars to build this text editor, as you can see. Of course, when I'm making technical decisions, as we previously discussed, I'm making them based on some serious assumptions, right? Who the hell is building this? How long is this going to be maintained? Do they have people to improve this and maintain it? So all of these things checked in the context of TipTap, right? They raised money, they have a good team, they're building features, and also on top of it, they provide um, some premium features as well. So for example, what are the premium features you might ask? Well, so things that luckily I don't need now, maybe never, but they have content AI, collaboration editor, so if you get over here, so I can actually show you the product, let's take a look at the content AI. So they, they provide pretty simple implementation of these LLMs, uh, you know, um, various other things, right? So uh, collaboration, so basically like WebSocket, real-time collaboration. So you open up an editor and then you can see you can collaborate with other people, so et cetera. But these are extra features. Anyway, the thing is free pretty much for 90% of the features. And then, of course, they also offer the plugins uh, that you can uh, also buy. And again, when I say buy, these things are so cheap, especially if you have established business. It's like 150 bucks or whatever, right, per month. So for an established business, that's nothing. Anyway, that's not the point. This is not to, to, to sell them, right? So as you can see, uh, TipTap is based on extensions. I've wrote some extensions already for Programmer Network. But as you can see, some of these extensions are pro, meaning you have to pay them, pay for them. 90% of them are free. As you can see, there are many of them here. So basically the system of TipTap is based on extensions. And that's where I'm trying to take you now in the implementation that I have in my Yale library that I wrote and, and in Programmer Network. So I'm gonna show you that in a second. But as you can see here, you have a bunch of extensions you can download, you can write your own. They have the extensions API. And if we go here to documentation, we can search for ex extension, extend existing extensions or create new extensions. So they have a very simple API here on how you can build your own 
uh, plugins, extensions, whatever you want to call them inside of TipTap. This is amazing. This is super cool because you can build your own experience inside of the editor. Maybe the bold or H1, whatever is not enough. Maybe you want to extend your rich text editing so a user can insert a table or a custom React component that takes some input. So it's it's really limited your imagination. But as you can see here, you can create the, the actual extensions. Fairly simple. Uh, it, again, sometimes you will need to hook into the Pros Mirror API a little bit lower. So of course, their abstraction is not going to cover all of your needs. You will oftentimes need to say, okay, well, I can't really achieve this with TipTap. I need to go more low level. Then you would kind of need to fall back to this a bit. Anyway, so with that said, now you have the context, right? Uh, if we go, don't drop the database. My friend, you're here again. Uh, so if we go back here, right? So if we go to, to tip tab that I implemented here, right? Um, let me actually show you. It's very interesting. I think I did it pretty well. And I'm going to show you why I think that. Uh, so if we go to, and this is open source, right? So you can, you, you have this, you have access to this online. And I highly advise you to take a look at it. Because somebody mentioned XSS attack, right? Uh, and that's why I, uh, I said this. So the way that I implemented my, uh, these little subsystem on top of TipTap works like this, right? So you have a TipTap component and this component can take an extensions array. So you say, I have a TipTap that I want to have bold and heading one. But I have another instance that, that takes uh, YouTube uh, video and uh, image, for example, and I can show you that if you if you sign up if you have signed up on Pro Programmer Network, you will obviously notice already that um, here we're in this instance of, of TipTap we're supporting bold, italic, link, blah blah blah. If I go to write a new article, you'll notice we're supporting a bunch of these extensions. If I go into a comment, you'll see that in the comment we're supporting these, right? So the way that I built it for Programmer Network and this is open source is. You basically, when you instantiate your tip tap, so if we go to a uh, storybook here, you'll notice that it takes this toolbar items. And toolbar items basically is just an enum or a list of strings of extensions. So you're saying, hey, I want bold and heading, right? So, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one thing. Now, another th thing that somebody mentioned is, uh, is, is security, right? So how do you know, Alex, that somebody's not gonna inject some crap in here, right? Well, we're using sanitize HTML. So I have basically built this on top of Sanitize HTML and Sanitizer basically meaning it hooks into my TipTap now. So only the extensions I enable, we only support these HTML tags, right? So for example, you can see here, if we go into my, if all of this stuff is that I wrote, so th these utilities and stuff. So I have this TipTap to HTML class that I wrote. I have this gener generate sanitized HTML. So why do I do that? So you can see that when I'm generating the HTML, um, I call this generate HTML and I give it the tip taps content state. So content, so tip tap generates this JSON content state that I stringify and then unstringify whatever. So here I'm turning it back into an object and then I give it here to generate HTML, right? And then this is my sanitization configuration. So here I list only the HTML tags that are allowed and attribute for each HTML tag that I allow. So you can see for anchor tag, I only support href and data type. For iframe, I only support SRC. For image, I only, right? So this way you can ensure that nobody is gonna inject a script tag in your content, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So overall, basically you have a tip tap, you have a sanitizer, and then you have a lot of options you can pass to an instance of your editor. So um, you can you can use it in different ways, right? So you can see here, uh, it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. But this is um, this is the the magic with with the with the headings. And then of course, you have things like I have one custom plugin, and a plugin is basically uh, to, to 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 tag, right? So if I come here, and press this, this suggestions, right, is all of the tags that exist in um, in a program network. So you can say TypeScript is the best, right? And then you post it, right? So that is basically uh, how it works. So yeah, so it's so far the for all of these years, probably the best um, 
the best uh, rich text editing solution that I've used. Draft.js was the previous one and I, I bled. I remember Numinex was here. This used to be something that Google used, uh, that Facebook, sorry, used on facebook.com and they used to maintain that. Unfortunately, as you can see, they deprecated this thing on February 6th, so last year, in favor of Lexical.js that I would not suggest and I will personally never use. 500 issues, but this is basically, if you're using Facebook, I hope you're not, but if you're still registered there, this is what is running on Facebook right now. So this one. All right, that, uh, that's, that's pretty much about uh, TipTap. That concludes the TipTap one.